hello students hope you are all fine and you are staying at home so uh, recently actually i uh, i have got so many request students are asking me sir please discuss about some uh, basics of dialectic constant or relative permittivity so actually i discussed earlier also so actually what what is what is permittivity of a medium so let me explain first that when we have two charges and we are placing those charges in any medium other than the air the force between them is greatly affected so permittivity is a property of that medium which determines uh, that the electric force between two charges uh, placed or situated in that medium for example say uh, the force between two charges located at some distance apart in water is about 180th of the force between them when they are separated by the same distance in air so this is because the absolute permittivity of water is about 80 times greater than the absolute permittivity of the air or free space and the dielectric constant or the relative permittivity so so according to the coulomb's law the force between two point charges q1 and q2 are placed in vacuum at a distance r from each other we can write f is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 by r square so since we have taken uh, the medium as vacuum so that will be force at vacuum you can write simply force suffix vacuum is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 bar square so now when the same two charges are placed uh, same distance apart in any medium rather than vacuum means we are placing the charges q1 and q2 uh, keeping the separation between these two as same means r but instead of taking the vacuum now we are uh, assuming some other mediums then the force between them becomes electrostatic force between them becomes a force medium will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon q1 q2 bar square so basic difference is the epsilon 0 and epsilon so epsilon 0 was the relative permittivity in vacuum and epsilon will be the uh, permittivity in medium so the quantity epsilon is called absolute permittivity or just you can say permittivity of the uh, uh, medium so basically from there we can also get some expression that if you divide uh, force in the vacuum to the force in the medium then obviously force vacuum by force medium will come epsilon by epsilon zero so in other words also you can say the ratio epsilon by epsilon zero of the permittivity of the medium to the permittivity in free space is also called the relative permittivity or dielectric constant of that medium so basically dielectric constant if denoted by k so k we can write epsilon by epsilon zero or f, <coughs> f vacuum by f medium so so one can define dielectric constant in terms of forces between charges or in terms of permittivity in vacuum or permittivity in free spaces also so in in terms of force if you want to uh, define dielectric constant you can say that dielectric constant of the medium may be defined as the ratio of the force between two charges placed some distance apart in free space to the force between the same two charges when they are placed in some medium within that same distance so basically in terms of force medium also we can express force vacuum along with dielectric constant k we can simply write force medium is force vacuum by k or we can write force vacuum is equal to force medium into k so by knowing the value of k or by knowing the value of force medium and force vacuum obviously uh, other factors can be identified but you remember one thing that the dielectric constant of vacuum is always one dialectic constant of air is always 1.00054 means 1.0054 and dialectic constant is 80 8080 fine so that was the all about the dielectric constant or uh, you can say the relative permittivity so now in the screen you can see now you can see uh, there are some questions 
given to you those some of those questions were asked previously in different cbse exams or ic exams and some were asked in different entrance exams also so these questions i think are very crucial or these uh, questions are very conceptual to you so may know the answer but in today i'll discuss some questions along with their answers answers i will not share or answer i will not write in this video so rather i'll give you the uh, picture of all questions so i'll line by line i'll answer all the questions fine so first question you can see from the screen that first question is when a glass rod is rubbed with silk both acquire charges so what is the source of their electrification means a glass rod is rubbed with silk and after rubbing the glass rod with silk both are having some charges so from where these charges are coming so what is the source of their electrification so answer will be very simple one or two line answer will be enough so for the electrification of our body only electrons are responsible don't forget that thing for the electrification of any body only electrons are responsible so during rubbing electrons are transferred from glass rod to silk so the glass rod acquires a positive charge and silk acquires an equal amount of negative charge fine so second question is the um, whether the mass of the body affected on charging is the mass of the body affected on charging so answer will be yes obviously why not because electrons have definite mass so the mass of the body slightly increases if it gains electrons while the mass decreases if the body loses some electrons so if electrons are increasing that mass will be more if electrons are decreasing so mass will be less simple fine then question number 3 question number 3 is that can two like charges attract each other means two positive charges two negative charges same polarity charges so can that uh, two like charges attract each other if yes how so yes like charges can attract each other if one charge is larger than the other the larger charge introduces induces the equal and opposite charge on the nearer end of the body with smaller charge the opposite induced charge is larger than the small like charge initially present on it so obviously uh, the like charges can attract each other fine the next next question is that electrostatic experiments do not work well on humid days give reason the answer will be that electrostatic experiments acquire accumulation of charges whatever charges appear during the experimentation they are drained away through humid air which is more conducting than dry air due to the presence of a larger number of charged particles in it fine next question simple question the electrostatic force between two charges is a central force why the answer will be electrostatic force between two charges acts along the line joining the two charges so it is a central force next is how is the coulomb force between two charges affected by the presence of a third charge the answer will be the coulomb force between two charges does not depend on the presence of a third charge fine next question is why should a test charge be of negligibly small magnitude whatever we are taking now while considering potential while considering electric field while considering electric force all the time we are saying that a test charge is applied a test charge is there is test charge we should consider so that is why test charge should have negligibly small magnitude the magnitude of the test charge must be small enough so that it does not disturb the distribution of the charges whose electric field we wish to measure otherwise the measured field 
will be different from the actual field that is why we always choose a test charge be a negligibly small magnitude fine next question is the what is the advantage of introducing the concept of electric field i think this is very important question so by knowing the electrical field at a point the force on a charge placed at that point can be determined fine next question is a charged particle is free to move in an electric field will it always move along an electric field so answer will be that that the tangent at any point to the line of force gives the direction of the electric field at that point and hence a force on a charge at that point if the charged particle starts from rest it will move along the line of force if it is in motion and moves initially at an angle with the line of force then a resultant path is not along the line of force fine next question is why an electric field is zero inside a charge conductor the answer will be that the electric field is zero inside the charge conductor because the charges reside on the surface of a conductor and not inside it therefore the electric field is always zero in a charge conductor next question is can electric line of force form closed loops give reason for your answer answer will be no because we know that electric field lines are always passing from positive and ends at negative point so the direction of an electric field is from positive to negative charge so one can regard a line of force starting from the positive charge and ending on a negative charge this indicates that an electric line of force cannot form closed loop if it is possible that the direction of electric field is from positive to negative along and again from negative to positive then you can say that the electric line of force form closed loops but it is not the case in case of electric field lines you know that the electric field is always passing from positive to negative charge that is why it is cannot form closed loops the next question is do the electric lines of force really exist what is about the field they represent answer will be the lines of force do not really exist because these are the imaginary lines so these are hypothetical curves used to represent an electric field but the electric field which they represent is real fine then a very important question i think what uh, why is uh, it is necessary that the field lines form a point charge placed in a vicinity of a conductor must be normal to the conductor at every point so in cbsc 2009 that question was asked so if the answer will be that listen carefully if the field lines are not normal then the field e would have a tangential component which will make electrons move along the surface creating surface currents and the current and the conductor will not be in equilibrium so if the field lines are not normal say for any orbit angle then the electric field would have a tangential component which will make electrons move along the same surface creating surface currents and the conductor will not be in equilibrium that is why it is necessary that the field lines form a point charge placed in a vicinity of the conductor must be normal to the conductor at every point and the last question is that the electric lines of force tend to contract lengthwise and expand laterally what do they indicate so basically this is one of the properties of the electric lines of force fine so this statement indicate that the lengthwise contraction indicates attraction between unlike charges while a lateral expansion indicates repulsion between like charges means the lengthwise contraction indicates the attraction between unlike charges fine so unlike charges mean positive and negative charges while lateral expansion indicates repulsion between like charges mean to positive positive to negative negative there might be some repulsive force due to that repulsive force the lateral expansion will be there 
much because in in the vicinity of the uh, field obviously you can expect that uh, if you are taking one positive charge there must be another positive charge so obviously that positive charge will be repelled by one positive charge you are taking another negative charge will be repelled by another negative charge what means what you are, you are taking so obviously the length of contraction indicates always indicates the attraction between two unlike charges and the uh, lateral expansion indicates repulsion between like charges fine thank you for listening thank you hello students